I wondered why I couldn't organize my thoughts. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder presents significant challenges to millions, but these people show that ADHD doesn't have to limit you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 inspirational people with ADHD. I was such an a, a aggressive and tough player, but uh, everybody's got feeling. For this list, we're looking at people with ADHD, previously known as ADD, who have worked hard to meet the challenges associated with their condition and make their mark on the world. Dirty babe, you see these shackles, baby, I'm a slave. I'll let you with me if I misbehave. Number 10, Ty Pennington. Ty Pennington has worked as a model and a set designer, but he really became famous when he hosted the hit series Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Are you guys ready to see your new house? Yes! Are you guys ready to see the house? Yes! Pennington's wacky sense of humor and personal charm made him a star, but his journey wasn't easy. As a child, school was especially difficult for Pennington since he struggled to stay focused. Now, when I was in elementary school, my mother received countless phone calls from my teachers, the principal's office, and even my guidance counselor, because uh, I was constantly in trouble for something. His mother discovered he had ADHD, but didn't inform Pennington of his diagnosis until he was 17. But I learned to cope with the symptoms by channeling my energy into my passion, which is building things. When he began receiving treatment, life changed dramatically for him. Despite his ADHD, Pennington has managed to juggle multiple tasks and to focus his energies to establish a unique niche as a television personality and designer. Okay, it's the morning of day three and I'm about to take a refreshing dip in our new pool. Uh, uh, yeah, not really a new pool here at all, is there? Number nine, Adam Levine. lead singer of Maroon 5, Adam Levine has achieved commercial success and picked up a slew of awards, including several Grammys. The charismatic vocalist has also been a celebrity coach on The Voice, an actor, and the power behind his own fragrance line. I'm scared to death. <laughs> <Just> spray yourself. <laughs> After struggling with hyperactivity and impulsivity growing up, Levine was diagnosed with ADHD as a young teen and began treatment. However, like many kids with ADHD, he didn't realize the condition could continue into adulthood. On the first album, I remember very distinctly uh, being very being stuck and not, and not being able to to focus and I had you know 30 ideas floating through my mind. Levine has since become a spokesperson for adults with ADHD, urging proper diagnosis and continued treatment. ADHD is complex. It's complicated, and you know it was a struggle for me. But when you're an adult, you can actually sit down and say, okay, this is what I suffer from. How do I handle it? Number eight, Channing Tatum. I got these tickets uh, to the One Direction concert. I love One Direction. Do you have an extra ticket? Yeah. As a child, Channing Tatum had to deal with both ADHD and dyslexia, which was a tough experience for him in school. Today, however, the star of hit movies like Magic Mike and 21 Jump Street is much in demand and popular with men and women alike. One particle of unitanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor, carry the two changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Fuck you, science. Yet even now it's not easy, since Tatum has said it takes him much longer than most to process things he reads, and focus requires extra work. But through his steel will and fierce determination, the actor has succeeded beyond measure. Unlike many others with ADHD, Tatum is not a fan of prescription medicines for the condition and has courted controversy with his stance. He says he believes some children need medication, but since he didn't, the more he took, the less it worked. Tatum doesn't dismiss treatment for everyone, but found that it just didn't work for him. Channing's advice, quote, if we can streamline a multi-billion dollar company, we should be able to help kids who struggle the way I did. Number seven, Pete Rose. Please welcome Pete Rose. One of the greatest players in Major League Baseball history, Pete Rose is the unquestioned champion in terms of hits, games played, at-bats, singles, and outs. Pete Rose into Ray Fossey, who is slow in getting up. The winner 
owner of two gold gloves and three World Series rings, Rose's career is unique in baseball. Although he was a legend on the field, he struggled with gambling due to his ADHD, which he spoke out about in his memoir, My Prison Without Bars. Rose was diagnosed in middle age, and some suspect that his ADHD may have played a big part in his success. Nobody's perfect, and I certainly wasn't, and, and I understand it. I'm not going to argue with him, and I know I, I messed up in baseball. Despite the many challenges he's had to face in his career, the determination he showed in baseball is inspiring to athletes everywhere. Number 6. Howie Mandel You know, I'm mm -hmm. medicated, I go right. to therapy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I figured you'd laugh at that, that's not funny either. Having ADHD presents plenty of challenges on its own. For Howie Mandel, things are made even more challenging because he also has obsessive compulsive disorder. I can remember uh, I had learned to tie my shoes, went to school and the laces came undone and they had touched the floor and then I didn't want to touch the laces and tie the shoes. The popular comedian, actor and television personality unintentionally revealed his OCD diagnosis on The Howard Stern Show and was at first horrified that he had done so. I didn't know we were still broadcasting. I said, no, I see a psychiatrist, I have OCD, I'm medica I can't, this is not funny, this is not a joke. And they ended up opening the door for me and then I realized that this got broadcast. However, he's since become a crusader for those with any sort of mental health issue. While the media has focused on Mandel's OCD, his struggles with ADHD are equally real. As a matter of fact, it may be his ADHD that prompted his impulsive revelation about his OCD. Handrails are my enemy. I never go near a handrail. I won't open those things. I would never serve myself. I wouldn't touch this because a lot of people have touched that. Mandel's courage helps all with ADHD to be more accepting of their struggles. We take care of our dental health, we don't take care of our mental health, and I believe that this is a seed for every problem we have in this world right now. Number five, David Nealman. But, you know, I, I really strongly believe that, you know, ordinary people can do extraordinary things if they just follow certain principles. David Nealman's name may not immediately ring a bell with the general public, but he's an important role model for those with ADHD nonetheless. Just follow your dreams and follow your passion. You know, don't, don't let anyone tell you, um, you know, what you should be interested in. And then when you do it, do it the best. Nealman is an immensely successful businessman who has founded four airlines, most notably JetBlue. When's the last time you saw the head of an airline show up on one of his flights and not only talk to his passengers, but treat them like people? Like a chocolate chip cookie? Nealman struggled with symptoms of ADHD, such as difficulty focusing, absorbing written information, and staying focused from an early age. However, it wasn't until he was in his mid-30s that he realized his symptoms resulted from ADHD. Nealman knew that he had other strengths, however, and found a way to access those while working around his shortcomings. You know, having um, attention deficit disorder has, has some drawbacks. You know, you're disorganized, you're, you know, kind of um, moving from project to project. But the advantages are you look at the world a little differently. That strategy seems to have worked out pretty well for him, wouldn't you say? You can do things different. You can become one of those five companies. You can become a company that changes things. Number four, Justin Timberlake. I'm bringing sexy back. Yeah. Boys don't know how to act. Like Adam Levine, Justin Timberlake is a respected and successful musician with ADHD. Like Howie Mandel, Timberlake revealed this in an interview in connection with his film The Love Guru. Someone ordered a special Quebec pizza, uh, you know, like in the porno. The multiple Grammy and Emmy Award winning artist hasn't divulged much about how ADHD affects him, but it's clear he's found a way to deal with the condition. His ability to produce hit after hit on the music charts shows that attention disorders can not only be controlled, but also overcome. Number three, Michael Phelps. One of the things that has been good for me, I think, besides training, has been my sort of mental preparation. Who knew that one of the world's greatest swimmers and one of the most decorated Olympians of all time had ADHD? which gives them the ability to hyper-focus, 
or multitask. When they're really into what they're doing, like Michael is when he was swimming. Diagnosed during the sixth grade, Phelps benefited from his mother's commitment to seeing him succeed, since she worked closely with schools to make sure Michael was given the resources he needed. You know, I, look at, I look at the water as a cocoon to Michael. I've watched it as he's grown up. Uh, it's, it's his comfort zone, it's what he loves. And um, he has just great, great passion for his sport. His personal foundation works to help children develop healthy lifestyles, giving Phelps an opportunity to help other kids get the chances they need. Have kids learn things that they'll use throughout their whole entire life, you know, confidence and, and yeah, I'm healthy, I'm strong. Um, promoting healthy and active lifestyle for children. ADHD clearly has not held Phelps back, and some experts point to his achievements as a demonstration of how ADHD can be turned into an asset for certain people. Number two, Sir Richard Branson. Richard Branson, the man with the golden touch and the billionaire smile. Some people believe that the symptoms associated with ADHD can actually be beneficial to entrepreneurs who are engaged in startup activities. The career of Virgin Group founder Richard Branson, who has both ADHD and dyslexia, certainly demonstrates this. I was um, uh, dyslexic. Um, I, I had no understanding of schoolwork whatsoever. Branson dropped out of school and started his first business at the age of 16. And by the time he was 22, he had established the Virgin Records chain, which became the basis for the massively successful Virgin Group. Somebody suggested slip disc records. Uh, we had the, you know, the old vinyl di disc which kept on slipping. Um, somebody else laughed, you know, why not virgin? Uh, we're all virgins and hysterical laughter all, all around. Knighted in 2000 for his services to entrepreneurship, Branson's personal wealth has been estimated at more than $5 billion. All of the multitasking he depended on as a result of his ADHD has definitely borne fruit, to say the least. I've been extraordinarily fortunate. I've enjoyed every minute of my life. Going forward, most of my time will be spent on setting up not-for-profit enterprises and seeing them you know, tackling some of the big, the big problems in the world. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I think one of the, the best dancers that I've ever had was uh, Corbin Blue. Um, we actually found a way to like pay tribute to some of our favorite shows or movies or, or musicals through the dances that we did that season. Because music keeps me sane, keeps my mind on something, because my mind will just wander. And if it wanders, that's not good. Number one, Albert Einstein. You're Albert Einstein. Thank you. Wow. May I say what a great fan I am of yours? Thank you. Einstein died in 1955, years before either ADD or ADHD were officially added to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Yet, the man with one of the greatest scientific minds of our time is considered by experts to have been a proud member of the ADHD club. Einstein is the personification of the typical absent-minded professor, as disorganized and forgetful as he was insightful and intelligent. Like many great innovators, Einstein was a rebel, a loner, but deeply curious. He was slow in learning to speak as a child, so slow that his parents consulted a doctor. His ADHD helped him to think outside of the box in a big way, and to develop the theory of relativity, which has revolutionized the modern world. He continues to be an inspiration to people with ADHD, and to all people everywhere. This concept that time and space are flexible, depending on how you're moving, became known as special relativity. It led to remarkable results, such as the famous equation relating energy to mass. Do you agree with our list? You, you know, to you it's a joke. To me uh -huh. it's my life. I will go everywhere with this. <laughs> I will travel. Are there other people with ADHD whose deeds should qualify them for this list? Everybody's talking about it. Everybody is talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Let's talk about something else. For more inspirational top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It's your ADHD. Own it.